Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskycharters.com. By Grilla Grills of Holland, Michigan, makers of wood pellet, charcoal grills, and professional pellet smokers. Grilla Grills are designed for ease of use to improve your grilling or smoking skills. More information at GrillaGrills.com. Hey everybody, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Really unique show this week. We're going to start above the bridge doing a little musky fishing out of a canoe. You won't want to miss that. Then we're going to head down to Fletcher's Pond and show you what it looks like to catch a few bass there. Then we're going to head over to Elk Rapids and do a little smallmouth bass fishing from shore. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air From the Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan we all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988 Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar Details at CountrySmokehouse.com By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at G5Outdoors.com To those who say we can't build a healthy economy while protecting the environment, DTE Energy has something to say. We're already doing it. Because you don't get to the forefront of cleaner, efficient energy by talking about it. DTE Energy. Soaking in the rich tradition of Michigan hunting for over 30 years, Vanguard is proud to sponsor our friends at Michigan Out of Doors TV. I spend a lot of time on the road, but it is all worth it, especially when you're heading north for a few days in the Upper Peninsula. So many great corners to explore. Tom, what's our plan of attack here? Where are we, what are we doing here tonight? We're going to get some fish. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> we'll do what it takes. We don't usually uh, go to regular places and use regular stuff, so hopefully we get a, don't get regular results. That's the, that's we're, the plan. And we're chasing musky tonight? Musky. Yeah. We might get a walleye or two. If we get a walleye, it should be a good one. This was no normal fishing trip. We were going to be on the Tequamanon River, which is about 90 miles long. We were also going to be fishing with four of us in a canoe. Now, getting the canoe to the water, well, also a big deal. Tom and his boy Trent, along with their good friend Eric Solon, were going to be hiking this boat in quite a ways to get to the water. So here we are. We are, uh, I don't know if portage is the right word, but we just brought in a uh, canoe, trolling motor, batteries, uh, all the fishing gear we need for musky fishing on the Tequamanon River. And uh, I don't know, this is maybe 100 feet, 150 feet that we're having to uh, take all the stuff down. Now they're bringing the boat down. And uh, <laughs> I hope the fishing is worth it. But I tell you what, I bet we will be the only boat on the water. This is the only way to get a boat into this area. So <laughs> it should be fun. This was a steep bank and it was hard enough to go down. I really was interested to see how the up the bank trip was going to work. But these guys are hardcore extreme fishermen to say the least. And they didn't waste any time in getting some big body baits flying as they searched for the elusive UP muskie. So after an hour or so of casting, it looked like we might just have some success.
<laughs> you hooked another one, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you saw, look at them all around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have to say, fighting a muskie from a canoe in a pristine UP river, well, that's about as cool as it gets. Tom has this down to a science and lets the fish get tired before they even think about unhooking them. He says that netting the fish only seems to hurt the fish and honestly, the fishermen as well in these tight corners. So after the fish is good and tired, they go ahead and unhook the fish, take some pictures and get it right back in the water. As it turned out, the fish were starting to get a little active and we had number two on the line. <laughs> Look at the smile. How big is it? Just the size of the fish by the size of the smile. Well, we didn't get the hook set on that one, but that thing was for it. Oh my! He jumped right out of the water. <laughs> jerk, jerk. <laughs> <laughs> jerk, jerk. Ooh. Reward. Oh, you gotta All right, is our unhooker ready back there? No, not yet. No, he's still too green. That fish is green. It's pretty big. Yeah. We give him, we give him enough time to play out. We don't use a net or anything, so it takes a second. Just let them tire out? Yeah, yeah, give them a couple little taps on the head and they'll let you know when they're ready <laughs> to be handled. They can't wiggle <laughs> anymore. Trent, what do you like about this kind of fishing? It's in your face, man. This one jumped out of the water <laughs> after it. <laughs> it's pretty cool catching these big fish in this kind of a small river. Oh, yeah. Big lure. We just lost a big one a minute ago. Come up and bit it and didn't get it. Well, he had the hook right in the Right in his right lips, no, but right we pulled out. pulled out. It's probably eight inches bigger than this one. This was a dandy fish and had just hammered the bait right near the boat. Trent is a very good fisherman for just a teenager, and it shows he has had some good training. Beautiful. Well, congratulations, young man. Thank you. <laughs> that is it took a while, but we finally got another one. What a beautiful fish. Yeah. Eric and Trent swapped back and forth throughout the day for the front of the boat, and it was Eric who had the coolest bite I think I'd ever seen, topwater muskie. Way to go! You've been working for that fish. <laughs> Took me all day. <laughs> Watch that line up there, Eric. Oh, yeah. Don't get me now. Yeah, don't point him at the boat, Eric. Don't point, lead him away, because he'll jump right in. Try not to spin him. Just put his head away from the boat. I just had to show you this one more time. This fish just destroyed this bait coming out of the water to get it. It was an awesome evening. Well, how many how many casts did that take today for you? Yeah, that's a fish. Well, like about three million. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say? Ten thousand casts? I think you were pretty close. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Your dad would be proud. <laughs> Well, I know Eric's dad was proud, as were all of us in the canoe. It was a very unique kind of fishing, and to have a few fish taker offerings, well, it was a trip I won't soon forget. One of the reasons, though, is that it was just so hard to do. This part of the river has no real access points, you can't really wade it, you can't really cast from shore very effectively. Dragging a boat in here is just insane, but yet these guys do it, and they were rewarded. It was getting close to dark as the long task of getting the gear up the hill began and it was close to midnight by the time we got back to camp. Luckily, some venison spaghetti was awaiting us, and it sure hit the spot. Well, and thanks to the guys for letting me be a part of such a great trip to the Upper Peninsula. They even showed me one of their secret trout spots the next day to round out the trip. We have such variety here in our great state. Make sure you get out and take advantage 
here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, as you can see, we had a ton of fun on that trip. And again, thanks to the guys for making that happen. What we're gonna do now is head down below the bridge over to Fletcher's Pond and show you what it looks like to fish that rather unique piece of water. If you're looking for a new corner of the state to explore, don't overlook the place you may have heard about but have never been to before, Fletcher's Pond. Tucked away in the northeast part of the lower, this area is an outdoorsman's paradise. Fletcher's Landing was originally Charlie's Landing, uh, opened back in the 40s. Um, my father Lowell purchased this place back in the uh, late 80s, and for the last six years, me and my brother Stephen have been running it as uh, Fletcher's Landing. Primarily our customers are hunter and fishermen, um, mainly bass fishermen and northern pike fishermen, however we get a lot of panfish as well. Um, we have 14 uh, cabins and houses right here on the lakefront, um, right here in waterfront. Um, anywhere from three to six people per cabin. Um, mostly we're busy in the summer with uh, pan fishing and bass fishing and pike fishing. Also we do a lot of uh, some deer hunting and duck hunting in the fall, then ice fishing in, in February and in January and February we get a lot of ice fishermen. We're up in northeastern Michigan. We're about 20 miles west of Alpena in Hillman um, on Fletcher's Pond, which I believe is about 9,000 acres, which is about Michigan's 11th largest inland lake. When David reached out to me to see if I would be interested in doing a little fishing on Fletcher's Pond, I jumped at the chance. It's been a long time since we had a camera on this lake, and always looking for an excuse to head north, here we were on one of the nicest days they had had in the early spring. David's buddies Tyler Ferris and Brad Schrader were going to be showing me how to fish this lake, which is full of stumps and debris, making it a little different than most northern lakes. If you're a first-timer here, well, just go slow. It's unique, um, it's a flood water. Um, back in the 30s, they dammed up one of the branches of the Thunder Bay River, um, which then flooded this entire valley. Um, afterward, the loggers came in and chopped up, cut out down all the trees right about water level. So if you're looking across, it's only about six to eight feet deep throughout most of the lake. However, there's stumps and logs and all kinds of cover right, right along the bottom and along, along the water line of the lake. What do we got there? It's a uh, tube bait. Right. Tube Texas rig style. Size weight you got in there? Uh, that's a 3 16 bullet weight. All right. Just uh, casting out and dragging it back on the bottom over the stumps, over the logs. Look if we can get some takers here. Well, because there are so many stumps, you really can't open up your motor and just run. You need to go slow, watch for stumps. But when you do get lines in the water, well, it's worth the travel time. Oh, a nice fish. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That's what we're here for, right? With all the debris, there are plenty of places for the fish to hide, and there is more than one technique to find these fish. Right now, being in the shallows, we're just um, pitching, throwing tubes out, just slowly reeling it back over the logs, letting it drop over the logs, and just uh, hoping to get one of these males that are up here in the shallows right now um, making the beds. So. Okay. And this is, I mean, obviously there's a ton of structure. Is it, is it too much or is this, a, is this great? Um, we find it great. We, we love it. Um, could be too much for some people. I know some people come up here and get frustrated because it's too much and get hung up a lot. And Like the driver working the boat right now, having to work around all these logs is pretty tough when the wind picks up. So That's why you had him drive? Yes, that's why I let him drive. <laughs> A little later, we might move out and throw some jigs at, you know, some in some deeper water there. Okay. And you guys uh, found a few fish earlier today? We did. Same area that we're fishing right now. We came out, found some fish, and obviously that's why we came back out here. And okay. hopefully as it uh, gets later in the day, the bite will get a little better. Okay. Have you fished this lake quite a bit then? Yeah, I've been fishing it oh, maybe 10 years now, so I'm getting to know it better every year. I don't know why northern fish seem better looking than southern fish, but for whatever reason, on this perfect afternoon, that seemed to be the case. Well, you got the hard job up here steering. <laughs> yeah, the, the wind's dying down pretty good, so that's nice, but... It's like a yeah. minefield out there. Whew. Yeah, we just uh, we just get banged around a little bit, but it's uh, it's all right. We just try to, to get up so we can get underneath the logs and uh, we're just starting to try to make the beds a little bit. So Okay, it's it, pretty shallow in here, eh? Yeah, it's got to be, well right now it's uh, one and a half feet. Wow. And so it, you know, every 
you can see all of the stumps out here everything everywhere you go it's a different uh <laughs> different, different, challenge. different challenge right <laughs> so good but you get them though uh, i don't know if it's big enough oh it's a good looking fish uh, it's wrapped around the uh every every tree <laughs> That's a fish. Look at that big old mouth. This is a very unique lake, and from talking with folks that fish it on a regular basis, they all rave about how much they love it. Not sure if it's the amount of fish or just being up north a long way from the craziness of life. Young man, sir. All about the same size right now. We were finding primarily bass today, but the pike fishing here is also very good and really good pretty much all year round. People like it because with the way the lake is, there's really no jet skiing or water skiing, so it's pretty much 100% fishermen out here. We're open year round. Um, fishing really, it's weather dependent. Um, this year is a little bit colder, but usually late April, people are up here fishing and you have people out fishing all the way into late October. And then obviously about early January, the ice fishing picks up into March. So. A lot of people fishing tip-ups for pike, um, a lot of pan fish as well. Um, some Get some good 10, 11, 12 inch perch. Out. Back of the boat's leading the pack here. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the captain up front. Yeah, I don't have to do nothing except fish back here, you know? Thanks, fish. Oh. Nice job, young man. Thank you, sir. We fished most of the afternoon and headed in as the sun began to set. We had a great time on really the first day of warm weather this part of the state had seen up to that point. So what do you do when you're up north after spending the day fishing? Well, you fire up the grill, sit on the porch, and tell some lies of past hunting and fishing trips. It really doesn't get much better. I'm not sure where your summer plans will take you this year, but if you're looking for a new corner to explore, consider Fletcher's Pond. It's a place aimed at folks who love the outdoors, and I bet there are a few fish waiting for you here in Michigan's Out of Doors. There are so many great opportunities around our state to do a little bit of fishing, and one of the places that you can do some really good smallmouth fishing from shore is Elk Rapids. Okay, we're going to be fishing here in Elk Rapids by the Power Dam and a little way out from the waters going out towards the marina. Uh, the target for today is going to be smallmouth bass, and we get big ones in here. 16, 17, 20 inches. Legal size 14, but uh, we always throw those back because there's big ones out here. Uh, we're gonna be mainly uh, using uh, two baits, uh, light line, four pound test. And hopefully we'll be catching some uh, big shit fish for the show. The plan today was to target smallmouth bass while fishing from shore, highlighting a fishery that almost everyone can take advantage of, using pretty basic equipment with a little different setup. Yeah, I have a seven foot uh, bass rod, it's an ultralight. Uh, I have a ultralight reel, and I spool the reel with an eight pound test, and I usually use braid and fluorocarbon, but uh, because there's no stretch between the braid and the fluorocarbon, I put about uh, three to four feet That's of uh, mono in between, and that acts like a little shock absorber if you get a real strong hit. And uh, if you can see, that's, that's the knot right there. That's my line. Then I have my shocker tied up to my terminal. And I use a three-way, small number 12 three-way with uh, about an eighth of an ounce weight on the bottom. And then I have about uh, 
24 to 26 inches of uh, four pound test leader. But this year I switched from Braid to a uh, new Berkeley Nano line and I'm very happy with it. Casts extremely far. It doesn't bunch up or it doesn't get any uh, wind knots in it. And uh, it's got no stretch and I'm very happy with it. You know, this is probably a 13 inch smallmouth, but they're really, really healthy. They got a nice fat body, nice color to them. With a weighted jig head, usually an eighth of an ounce weight, either split shots or an eighth of an ounce jig head will get you across and count of three gets you on the bottom bouncing. And using tubes uh, like I do imitating the gobies, uh, I just throw it out, just let it drift and give it a quick twitch with a tip and just let uh, hopefully nature take its course. Well, he got a pretty good hit on a tube, uh, pumpkin green flake, and uh, he came right in. Doesn't look like be like a big one, but uh, like I say, ounce for ounce, smallmouth are probably one of the most fightingest fish. Through the years, we found that probably the best size uh, tubes are uh, roughly two and, a, two and a half, two and three quarter, no more than three inches. I kind of equate it to an adult with a couple pieces of M&M candy on the uh, table and a great big five foot candy bar. You're more apt to grab the couple M&Ms and then come back for seconds. As we continued to catch fish, Don filled me in on some of the changes to the Elk Rapids area over the last decade. I've seen uh, quite a turnaround uh, through the years. People kind of bypassed Elk Rapids. It's right on 31 between Charlevoix and Traverse City. You're either going to Charlevoix or Traverse City. There's not too much to offer in Elk Rapids except little small town restaurants, maybe a little fishing. Uh, but now in the last, since we, we've been up here almost nine years, there's been a lot of new stores opening, a lot of wine and uh, uh, craft shows, tours, uh, a couple breweries are in here. So business is really good. It's kind of like a an area you want to put the hub of your uh, wheel and work out from to see a lot of the beautiful things in Michigan in the immediate area. But there's a lot in Elk Rapids. We got a lot of stores, new stores, a lot of nice restaurants. Uh, and just a simple, it's just a, basically a little three, uh, three block long uh, city, but it's beautiful to walk down. And a little small guy. Maybe the big fish didn't get the memo that they should be in. Yeah, this is a little bit bigger. Don't want to jiggle. Well, uh, actually, it's not bad. Uh, we've been catching fish, uh, not the way you'd like it to be. Uh, I've had days for almost every other cast you catch a fish and big ones. I was out yesterday morning, caught ten nice big ones over 16 inches. But this morning they're running slow. Maybe it's National Donut Day and all the big ones are at the donut shop. I don't know. But these small ones. They it's pretty unusual to have someone tell you exactly where they are catching fish, and even more rare to have them show you how to do it. Special thanks to Don for showing us another way to catch smallmouth bass here in northern Michigan. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Michigan Out of Doors this week. If you missed part of this week's show or last week's show, you can always check us out on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com full episodes of the show there every week. And if you're on YouTube, you can actually subscribe to our channel and get an email every time we post something new. Lots of fishing happening on the show here over the next couple of weeks, as well as an in-depth report on chronic wasting disease and deer management. We've been interviewing all sorts of people about that subject. You won't want to miss those shows. And hey, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or greenstonefcs.com. By EOTech, 
a Michigan company, equipping law enforcement and sportsmen alike with quality optics, creating jobs for Michigan workers, on the web at eotechgear.com. By Huron Lady River Cruises in Port Huron, offering daily sightseeing trips and private cruises for all ages, sightseers will experience the International Blue Water Bridge, Great Lakes Freighters, the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, and more. Huron Lady River Cruises on the web at huronlady.com. Closed captioning provided by Randy's Hunting Center, serving Michigan as Ruger and Leupold's National Dealer of the Year, an inventor of Ruger's 450 Bushmaster rifle. When I want to fire I am a Michigan man Changing seasons paint the scene Like rainbow trout in a hidden stream The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees I am a Michigan man I am, I am a Michigan man Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands Lord above, I love this land I am a St. Joe, Kalamazoo, East to Monroe, to St. Marie and back again. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. That's where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man.